Hi guys, um, I want to prepare you for the next quiz on something that you might have a little bit feel a little bit shaky on still, proved by contraposition and contradiction. We did some in the homeworks, and uh, as you see, I'll do very, very similar type of problems, and therefore also the quiz will be very similar. So that at least it's not something old, totally new that you're gonna uh, have to do, but of course each problem is different. Now, it's proved by contraposition and contradiction. Perhaps I tell you what to do. If I don't tell you, you have to choose one. And by the way, it's not necessarily the case that everything always works. In fact, in this particular case, there is one that works much better than the other. So, but I don't, I don't want to, to uh, tell you this without you discovering this. So let's go through the possibilities. So let's start with uh, proof by contradiction, by contraposition. Proof by contraposition. Now what do I have to do then? Well, we have here an if-then statement, right? So we have P, this is this whole thing is my P, and this thing is Q. Then we have P then Q, that is lo logic equivalent to the contrapositive, not Q, then not P. Now, a proof by contradiction, therefore, is I'm going to prove by direct means, not Q, then not P. In other words, I'm going to assume not Q and then show that not P follows. So, assume not Q, not Q. In this case, what is that? I, I'm, you don't need to write not Q if, if you can do it right away, but I just want to show you, you can do the intermediate steps, right? So, Q is R, S is rational. Not Q means that R, S is Sorry, R S is irrational, so not Q is R S is rational. Good, that's good because what is it? What's what's the bother? Why bothers me this this theorem, this this claim here? Uh, why don't I just prove it directly? Is because being rational, I know what that means. I can write it as a fraction. Being irrational. A negative property we have said that so many times is something is very hard to deal with in most cases. And I, so I don't know how to deal with this premise. In a, if I do a direct proof, remember, I would assume P. Therefore, I would assume that R is rational and that S is irrational. But assuming R is irrational, is, is I don't know what to do with that. Okay. So assume not Q, but is then what, what you have to do then to show not P. But here we have a little bit of a problem. If I know not P, that, let's see, what is P here? So as I said, this was P, right? But P is as an end statement, and the negation of an end becomes an OR, right? The De Morgan law. So I have to negate this part, and I have to negate this part and put an OR in there. So R is non-zero rational, is, is not rational, so R is irrational. R is irrational. Or, because I'm negating the end, S is rational. This is annoying. Because I have to prove some an OR statement. A proving of an OR statement means basically you have to do two different cases. You have to do the case that you get R irrational, or another case that your conclusion is as rational. That's not something I like to do. Also, if I make this assumption here on R S irrational, it seems that I have not enough information. I have only information about the product. I have nothing about either one. I seem to have not enough here. To, to get started. Now, I'm not saying that you could perhaps wiggle, wiggle your way out of here, but at this point, I feel more and more like I'm banding in this approach. So let's, let's do that. So I'm saying, okay, I'll put question marks to there. Is this the right way? Okay, so if that's not the right way, well, yeah, the other hope hopefully is proved by contradiction. Now, what do you do in a proof by contradiction? You assume that what you're trying to prove is not true. Now, in case of an implication, this means, so we assume, so not P then Q. So we, we're assuming not P then Q, but that's logically equivalent to P and not Q. That's the only way that an implication can be false. Namely, if you're trying to derive from something true, something false. Okay, so let me, uh, I, I wrote it down, okay, so here, sorry, this is still here. Let me write, spell it out more. So in other words, so this, what does this mean? This means I assume that P is true. What does that mean? I assume that R is rational. 
I assume also, because it's an end, right? Now it's an end, that's so much better. I also assume that not Q, in other words, it's not the case that Q... Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Assume that P is rational, sorry, uh, uh, P is this whole statement. P is rational and... Sorry, I was already going to my my second part. I'm just talking about P here. What does P say? P says that R is rational and that S is irrational. And S is irrational. Both things I can assume. And moreover, I'm also assuming this thing, right? Not Q, that the conclusion is not true. That this is not true, which is also nice because it also means something. It means that I assume not Q, which means that R times S is rational. So I have now three things, right? So let me let, uh, put a little bit perhaps all together. The three three assumptions that I have is these three assumptions. R is rational, S is rational, and R times S is rational. And what is my goal? That's the, 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 the good part of contradiction is you have more information because you're assuming everything that can be assumed. Uh, you're assuming the hypothesis and you're assuming the negation of the conclusion. The bad part is, or the vague part is, you have to get to a contradiction. And it's not obvious at all what are you going to contradict. You're going to find a statement that is also the negate and also the negation of that statement. But there's no way to, pre to predict in advance which statement that will be. And so, in other words, it's a little bit... Um, it's like when all of a sudden uh, you're, you're walking and all of a sudden the lights go out and you're, you're, you're now uh, uh, touching and trying to get your way a little bit in the dark. Let's see. Let's do that. Now, what is it that I can do with all my assumptions? Rational is a positive assumption, so I can spell out what that means. Let's do that. At this point, I don't see anything else, so spell out all the things I know. I have... I know three things, only two things I can really spell out. R is a fraction m over n, with m and n integers, non-zero. Well, n is non-zero, but we have not really paid attention, normally we have not this word here, non-zero here, also meant, I didn't write it down here, So, but actually it is part of, of the assumption, right, that R is not zero. It also means that n cannot be zero. Now I'm not sure what is that to, to do with anything, but you'll see. Okay. I used, so I used this positive information. This is negative information, I don't know what to do with that, but this is again positive information, that means that R times S is equal to M over N. I hear nobody, nobody is, is, is complaining. You should be complaining. Why are you using the same M and N here? There's no guarantee that these are the same M and N. And whenever you introduce a variable or an unknown quantity, don't give it a name of something that already exists. If you if you ever get to be father or mother and you're a parent and so you get one child and you name him John, I would suggest not to call the next guy also John. Okay? So that's kind of the thing. All right. So not M and N, so two not other letters. I take A and B. So A and B are integers. Oh, we're using our fancy notation that we just introduced. And of course, here B cannot be zero because I cannot divide by zero. That's everything I have. Now, I have to talk about S. I have to use this information somehow, but it is not positive information. So can I somehow get some information from the two things that I know, from, from these two things, just information about S itself? Well, here's S. But S is not by its own, so let's solve for S. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, perhaps let's... No. Let's do what we always should do, is if you have a new form for something that you... Uh, of course, uh, anywhere else, let's use the new form. So let's put in M on M here. So we have M over N times S is A over B. And now we cross multiply. Okay, we cross multiply. Well, what we do is we, we bring the N to the other side, it comes up, and we bring the M to the other side, it goes down, right? So S is equal to A, B... And then we have, as I said, the n comes up and the m goes down. Another way of saying this is I'm multiplying with the reciprocal, which is the flipped over version. Good. What does this now tell me? Well, okay. I know that this is just one single fraction here because I can multiply across. 
Okay, multiplying fractions, that's how you multiply fractions. But this tells me that this S is a rational number. Oh, oh that's not good because uh, at this point, S is rational, contradicts the f my assumption that S was irrational. But, okay, this sounds bad, but it actually is good because this tells me I have a contradiction. So always when you do this kind of proof, show... Show me that you see what the contradiction is, which are the two statements that are contradicting each other. Okay, I want to just point out very, very quickly, why was this non-zero business there that we never normally run into? Well, if I want to cross multiply here, it means I'm going to put m in the denominator. I better be sure that m is not zero. And so that's why I had this extra little information that this was a non-zero number and that could only be if this guy is not zero. Of course, if that would be zero, then the whole thing is zero, right? So it's a kind of little thing that we needed, otherwise we couldn't do this. Okay, that's just a small little guy. Okay, so that's one example of something. Let's do another example. If n squared plus 9 is even then n is odd. I've seen a couple of those very similar in the homework, so... Okay, again, I have two, perhaps possible two ways of proving this, proof by contraposition. As I told you, if I don't tell you what to use, you can use whatever you want. Of course, it has to be correct, but proof by contraposition. Okay, so this would be p, and this is q, right? So p then q is logically equivalent with not q then not p. Okay, what does that mean? q is not odd, not q. Uh, sorry, n is, <laughs> sorry, not q is the statement n is not odd, so it's the statement n is even. And that now implies, because it, there's, there's still an implication here, right? Not p. And what is not p? That n squared plus 9 is not even, therefore, meaning that it is odd. Okay, so now a direct proof how does the direct proof work? Well, you assume the hypothesis, so assume n is even. Uh, it, when you are new to this, it's always good to write down what are you assuming, what are you trying to prove. So to show n squared plus 9 is odd. Okay? And, and always perhaps be, be very clear to separate these things. This is something you can use. This is something you can absolutely not use yet. Okay? You, so you could say, oh, I can write now n squared plus 9 as uh, an even number plus 1. No, because you don't know yet. To show means basically I don't know yet. Okay? So if you want to emphasize this, put a question mark in front of it. And if you're Spanish, then put a question mark in, in, in front of uh, it. Sorry, I said in front, I mean in the back, and then now put a question in front that you really clearly see this is something I cannot use yet. And that is very often a an, an mistake people make. They're going to already assume what they need to prove. That's, of course, if, that, if you can prove things like that way, then uh, I would be out of business because everything would be so simple. Okay. Assume n is even. Okay. What can I do with that? That's a positive information that I can write. I mean that n is 2 times k for some natural number k. Again, I'm going to use my new fancy notation. And now I have to say something about n squared plus 9, so it makes all sense in the world to plug this newly expression in there. So that is 2k squared plus 9. So that would be 4k squared plus 9. Now, this far I'm sure many of you will get, but sometimes this is where people get stuck. What to do now? Well, let's go back. What do I have to do? That's why I need to write this up. It reminds me constantly what I need to do. Odd. Odd. Odd means you have, you can split over one and all the rest is a multiple of two. So if this is the case, let's try to split off n1. That means, means an 8 plus 1. And then I have to write this whole thing as a multiple of two, means meaning you can factor out the two. Of course, without creating a fraction. Okay? So, I can do that, right? I can factor out the 2. 2 squared plus 4 plus 1. And this is an odd number. And this is exactly what I need to show. So, I'm done. Okay? So here, the, this uh, proof by contraposition is very quick. 
let's do a, let's see whether the proof by contradiction works. Sometimes they don't work, but or perhaps sometimes they are hard to figure out what you are gonna try to contradict. Okay, proof by contradiction. So what does a proof by contradiction do? In a proof by contradiction, I'm assuming that this implication, this original implication, is false. Now that means that I am assuming p true and q false. So assume p holds and also assume not q. So and, and and there is no really to show because I don't know yet what to show. That's the weird thing. Okay, I have more assumptions. No, look, look, right? Compare. I have one assumption here, but I have very clear goal. Right? I have a light that I want to go to. Here I have two more information. Okay. I have, let's say, in my car, I have now my GPS as well, but it's dark and I have no clue where, where I should be going. That's the difference. Because why I'm saying that I don't know where to go is because I don't know yet what is it, uh, what statement I'm going to contradict. Which two statements I'm going to find. One is true and the other one is the opposite of it, the negation of it. So which are they going to be? Okay, let's work it out. P, what is P? P is true, so that means that uh, da -da -dum, n squared plus 9 is even. n squared plus 9 is even. And Q is not true, that means uh, we have to be careful, right? This is the real original statement. This means that it's not true that n is odd, so that means that n is even. Okay. Okay. So, which of the two can I now use? Well, both are positive. But if you do this a couple of times, if you write out that this thing is now a multiple of two, what are you going to do with them? Because you, you, solving for n is going to create radicals and oh, I don't want to think about that. Okay, So it's not so easy to work with this. Of course, if I know what n is, then I can plug that in, in there. So if you think about it, from here, I can plug in there. From here, I cannot plug in there, really. Okay, or much harder. So, okay. So, I'm going to work out what this means. This means that n is of the form uh, 2k for some k natural number. Note, by the way, we have already seen very often the proofs are now getting almost the same. Because what the next thing we're going to do? Well, I have to say something about this here. So, I'm going to plug in... This, um, which is now uh, 2k squared plus 9. And again, we did this calculation here. We come out that this is twice 2k squared plus 1 plus 1. Uh, no, plus 4 here, plus 4. Sorry, I got... I was so bad that I didn't even see myself. Okay. I'm, I'm skipping it. It's the same calculation, right? Which proves me what? It proves me that this is odd. So what I have found... I have n squared plus 9 is odd, but I also have already n squared plus 9 is even. We are dealing here with two things that are contradicting each other. So these two here, they are contradicting. So we have a contradiction here. And that's exactly the end of my proof. That's all I needed. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter what it is I'm contradicting. Now, in these simple examples, it's always kind of the same thing that you're contradicting. But in more complicated proofs, it's sometimes not so easy to uh, figure out what exactly you're contradicting. I remind you of one of proof of contradiction that we have seen in the lecture is about the irrational, the, the fact that a radical of two must be an irrational number. The contradiction there is, is, it's not clear what sentence, it, when we start the proof, it's not clear what we're going to contradict. It's also different in the sense that there was no implication, it was just a simple statement. So that is, of course, one big difference also between proofs by contradiction and proofs by um, contraposition. In contraposition, you have to have an implication because you have to take the contrapositive. Proofs by contradiction, you can be anything. Any statement is you can pro apply a proof by contradiction to. That's, that's a major big difference also. Okay, so I hope you're prepared for the quiz. As I said, trust me, it's one of these similar kind of things that you want to get.